back on the Z06. So where we left off, we had just finished the manifolds. So now we got V-bands welded on driver and passenger side LS3 manifolds. So now we can start building basically our hot side, more or less something like that, over to the fenders where we're gonna mount the turbos. So I think the next thing we need to do, I got the driver's or passenger side fender out of the basement. So the next thing we need to do is figure out exactly where we're gonna put the turbo. We need to have room for a two and a half inch up pipe to come in through here and also a three inch down pipe to get through here. So I brought this fender liner in, which we're definitely gonna have to trim a little bit, but I'd like to not completely hack it up. So goal for now is to get, you know, the turbo placement where we want it so we can start fabricating the, the pipes, you know, the up pipes to it. And I uh, still have room to squeeze a three inch down pipe kind of through here without hitting the tire and hopefully not, you know, without cutting this, uh, uh, splash guard or wheel well liner to you know to nothing so that's the goal for now so and i have to figure out a way to securely mount this turbo up in here and uh start fabbing some piping so i made this little mount here just out of some scrap steel i had lying around so i think this is about the position we're going to want the turbo in so it's just kind of loose in here but um should clear the fender and it needs to be you know mocked up so i can basically build the charge piping up to it um so let's see if we can get the fender on and uh see what kind of clearance we have all right fenders on little noisy boy hanging out in there and i think we got some room to spare even so basically now in this approximate position, we're going to be able to build the uh, up pipe and using this, you know, three inch piece of pipe here, I think we're going to have room for a down pipe here. Probably heading that way somehow. Yeah, cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, I think we got a good start as to where I need to start building this uh, upper pipe here. You know, it's going to look sweet with this turbo just, yeah, I can't really see in this lighting, but you know, just hanging out in the vent there. Should be pretty slick. So let's get this fender off and start building that uh, hot side pipe. Well, just hanging out under the car and uh, probably about three hours of fabrication where edit us this little guy. Well, I just put these uh, new casters on this fucking thing and uh, apparently they're playing around so we just ate shit but anyways all of our fabrication work last night has netted us this tiny little stupid piece here it's just the way fat times you know I'm sitting here just trying to hold 16 different pieces of exhaust together to get the right orientation around uh, you know over to the turbo here basically what we're trying to do is get a piece of pipe from the manifolds over to the turbo in this area here between this uh, K-member mount and still leave enough room for the down pipe to eventually come through this area. And also we wanna tuck it up as far as we can here because if you look this way, you can see that that's where the frame kind of arches up. So if we were to keep the pipe down here, we'd lose a ton of ground clearance. So we wanna tuck it in up here as much as we can. So basically, my time last night uh, was was basically working on that, but I think I got a good start to it here. I'm finally happy with some of these angles. So now we're going to continue over there. We're starting to make the corner around to the turbo where you know clearance is not as critical. So hopefully it goes a little faster, and uh, we have uh, basically one side of.
we already saw this side over here. So the goal is to now mirror it on the other side, which I think we did quite nicely here. Got our uh, sections of flex in there, or flex pipe in there. So if the motor moves at all, the, uh, you know, this, this part of the pipe will stay stationary where the turbos will be uh, rigidly mounted. You can see I've already got this fender test fit. Fits good. You can see the turbo peeking out of the vent, same as the other side. So that's done. Um, next thing we got to do is in here we'll have our new X pipe which is coming which will end right about here. We'll need to run the down pipes from over here, tuck them around here, and into the X pipe there. So when that shows up we can do that. We're waiting on some more stainless as well. Um, but in the meantime, um, my TurboSmart 40 millimeter wastegate showed up. So I think, I think I'm going to mount this right about here-ish probably and uh, the dump will just go straight down. So uh, that's the next part of this hot side, I think, is figuring out how we're gonna mount these waste gates and where we're gonna want them to dump. So, um, so yeah. And uh, we also need to drill a hole in one of the, uh, or in the passenger side manifold over here for the O2 sensor. A little more fab work to do on a couple of these things, but our pipes are basically done do the down pipes and then we can call the hot side done. Move on to other stuff on the kit. We still got fuel system, cold side. Um, so when you pull the motor, still plenty to do. So keep plugging away. So we got a decent start on the first down pipe. Um, got the V-band on there, and we fabricated or tack welded this uh, custom elbow here, basically so we can tuck the exhaust down. I loosened up the V-band, but yeah, basically it's got to go to the left to watch out for the uh, you know inner wheel well liner, and then down to go under the K member down there. So got a good start to that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do now, because the turbo is just kind of loosely mounted right now using this scrap steel I had, it's still a little bit, you know, can move around. And I'd hate to fabricate, you know, really tight tolerance in here and then get the final mounting done and find out that the downpipe hits on this, you know, inner wheel well liner or something. So I'm going to weld that up and also got some 3 16 304 stainless steel flat bar stock to replace this Lowe's special here. So I think what the next thing I'm gonna do is get at least one mounting bracket made for this um, up pipe here so that we know that the turbo is in its final position. So everything else, everything else that I fabricate around it, you know, we know it's not gonna move. Uh, Cause I'd hate to spend all this time and then have something move and have to redo it. So we're gonna get the turbos, you know, in their final spot using this heavy duty stuff here get them at least, you know, tack welded onto the pipes and fixed, make sure the fenders fit again, and then we know we can just build everything around it. So let's do that and go from there. All right, so we got this bracket right exactly where we want it. What is that? I don't know. Yeah, got the bracket where we want it. This is nice and solid now. Like I said, I might add another bracket over here at some point, but I'm also gonna be bracing the down pipe here, so we'll see, but for now, you know, the turbo is solid enough that we can fabricate the rest of the downpipe. So what we got here so far is something like that. So basically, like I said, I want to tuck it as close to the K member there as possible. Because if you look here, when I'm turning, we got to make sure we want to, or we don't end up contacting the tire anywhere. So gonna be close the problem is the you know obviously the suspension is unloaded so the tire is going to be farther down um, in reality the bottom of the tire is probably going to be kind of like a curvature like that when it's tucked up in the wheel well so it'll probably be fine but you know definitely going to check that before we completely weld it together but goal right now is to you know just just get from here to under there and then I think my plan is to take one of these 90s and basically just snake, you know, 
right over there and then it'll be a couple more connections to the x-pipe and uh, that'll be that so that's where we're at just plugging away it takes you know this, this stuff's time consuming just get an angle just right when everything's super tight like this this would go a lot faster if we had more room but you know every half an inch or quarter of an inch counts when your tires right there the frames right there the up pipes right next to it it's just 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag so taking it slow so hopefully i don't have to redo it and uh you know measure twice cut once i think they say i don't know whatever it's gonna be close just gotta shoot the gap there I think we can do it. Yeah, I think we can do it. Like I said, the tire is gonna be up here in the wheel well, which will bring us, you know, the pipe will be in relation down here, which gives us more room. You know, science, Pythagoras, you know, geometry and whatnot. So hopefully a little more room. So unless I literally, you know, get fully airborne in the car, and also, you know, turn the wheel full lock, which at that point I'm probably, you know, dead anyways. Shouldn't rub. We'll see. wanted to go over some of the new parts we got for the build here most of this is valve train stuff uh, while the motors at the machine shop wanted to gather pretty much everything we're gonna need the main event here is these uh, trick flow 220 heads um, so these will bolt right onto the 5.3 long block I have these are their as cast version but they're supposed to flow really well um, the main reason for these actually over a stock head is the thicker deck surface so this head's gonna be more rigid when it's exposed to a lot of boost. Uh, a lot of people have problems lifting the stock heads with you know higher boost levels, so I figured this would be a good bet. These are GM uh, LS9 head gaskets. So same head gaskets on the ZR1. I've run these on my last turbo Corvette with awesome results. Most turbo LS guys, you know, under <laughs> you know 50 pounds of boost will swear by those. Exhaust gaskets, oil pan gasket, cam gear, Timing cover set or a timing gasket set. Uh, Trunnion upgrade, we'll go through that in another video or later in this video. Timing chain, timing chain tensioner, uh, crank gear, ARP head studs, cam bolts, brand new GM lifter trays, uh, new valve springs that are rated for the lift. The, the springs that come in this head are not rated in the lift for this new cam here, and a set of Johnson uh, drop in 2110 lifters. Um, so yeah, basically the, you know, most of the entire top end of the motor is here for when the uh, motor machine shop. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys some of those parts. Obviously, you, you know, I'll go through all of it when we're assembling it, but, um, you know, spent a lot of money. Kind of wanted to show off uh, 
these parts that we got here. So yeah, as far as the car is concerned, um, just ordered some cold side parts uh, after we checked clearance to see we'd be able to fit 2.5 inch piping up through here. So ordered some of that, ordered an intercooler, but for now I'm going through and building my uh, uh, oil drain and oil feed line set up here. And I usually like to write it down just because the amount of fittings and hose and adapters and stuff, it can get kind of confusing, uh, especially because we're going to be mounting a turbo scavenge pump right here. So just wanted to write it down. So I'm going to order all this stuff. Whoopsies. Order all this stuff tomorrow. Alrighty. So we popped the car on the ground. Um, just wanted to, or just basically finish the downpipe on this side. You can see it tucked in right there. And the reason I had the car on the ground is I wanted to make sure for sure before we you know, continue any further that we have clearance between the tire and the downpipe at full lock with the suspension compressed. That side's good. That side is also good. So gonna continue. I'm almost done with the downpipe on the driver's side. Gonna finish that up. We're still waiting on the X-pipe. So basically get them to meet in the center the transmission tunnel and then we'll wait for the x-pipe to finish it but pretty much oh, getting close to being done with the hot side still got a, a few things left to do but it looks like as far as clearance is concerned we're basically all good uh, that was a big concern of mine um, so i think we're good so I'll... well the x-pipe showed up 600 dollars kooks x-pipe and the first thing we need to do is slice it up got to get rid of these flanges so normally this is where your long tube headers would have bolted to on each side it's got these uh, two bolt flanges and the um, radius or you call this, I don't know, punched out pipe here where the ball and socket joint would fit in there. Uh, so we're going to replace those with a V-band on each side. So X-pipes here. First thing we got to do is slice off both of those, tack on the V-bands, toss it up in the car. Then we'll be ready to finish the driver's side downpipe and also the passenger side downpipe and we can basically call the hot side done minus, you know, final finish welding. So slice it up, tack weld uh, some V-bends on there and get it up in the car. I think that's going to do it for this video guys. We've got the hot side basically completely done uh, all the way back to the tailpipes. Uh, so the next thing we do is going to be get the turbo drains and feed lines and cold side. So I think that'll be the next video. This one's probably already way too long. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Let's keep going on this turbo kit.